Trading today has become a very talked about topic all over the world. People from all backgrounds, whether it is financial, social, racial, or from any country are now talking about trading seriously and taking up more and more trading options available in the market. But many people wonder, what is the best way to trade? What are the best assets? How do they time the market and what will give them the best returns? I didn't know that the people had different styles. I didn't know that that wouldn't work for me. But eventually I found by trial and error uh, what I was less bad at, but I was reasonably good at. And so I found my way. There are people in every stage that try to tell you what you should and should not do when indulging in trading activities. There are politicians, academics, bureaucrats, and a lot more people who try to tell you that maybe gold is not worthy enough for investment, or that silver is not growing enough, or Bitcoin is too risky. But if you ask long-term investors and traders, they will tell you that gold is a great asset. Silver is an amazing investment. Bitcoin is the hottest and most profitable right now, and you should put your money in it right away. So what you need to think about is why is someone telling you to be wary of an asset? What is the logic behind their opinion and if they have any personal motives to tell you what they did? For example, politicians tell you that gold is not the best because they control the economy with gold to some extent. If you remember, gold was the entire money system just a few decades ago. It was what ran the entire financial market and it was the base of all economic activity. And though the monetary system has moved on to fiat now, gold is still very powerful, and so the government wants to keep a lot of it hidden, or just want to restrict its movement, so that they can incentivize the way they want it to go further. Gold is not worth it. Do not. Gold is a barbarous relic. That's what they call it. Maybe. But peasants like me, peasants like me throughout history, know that gold and silver, okay, it may be a barbarous relic, but I'm going to own it. If everybody had gold, the common man would go to their gold in the time of need instead of depending on the government. And that is what drives their opinion, that you should not invest in gold as much. When tough times arrive, millions and billions of people will go to the rescue of the gold, and the government might just not be able to handle it. Also, it is very well known that the economy today is really, really messed up. Governments all over the globe have been printing staggering amounts of money and borrowing like never before. The loans are increasing while the money printing is bringing the value of the currencies down. In fact, it has become so bad that for the first time in history, interest rates have gone into the negative and never before have banks started printing unlimited amounts of money without thinking of the consequences. So the chances of it all turning into a huge bubble and the fiat leading us all down is a very real possibility. And the most affected in that case would be the common people with their hard-earned money stored in the form of dollars or yen or euros in banks, whose value will fall when inflation drives the prices up. This will inevitably drive the prices of gold and silver and Bitcoin higher too as the value of money goes down. Some say that you stay with gold and do not listen to the government. This tells you that the silver and Bitcoin are the way to go in the future. But the most important thing this tells you is that there is no perfect way to trade. There's no hard and fast rules, no perfect assets. The best thing to do is to stay with what you know. Believe in what has worked for you and be patient. Trade and invest for the long term as that is where the real value and the real profit lies. Gold is not worth it. Do not. Gold is a barbarous relic. That's what they call it. Maybe, but peasants like me, peasants like me throughout history know that gold and silver, okay, it may be a barbarous relic, but I'm going to own it. You need not listen to the politicians. No need to believe the academics or the bureaucrats or the online tutorials that tell you that only one asset is perfect or why what you have been doing all these years is completely wrong. You need to trust your instincts and believe that your way of investment and trade is right. Of course, this does not mean that you stop learning or do not correct yourself if you find something you did to be wrong. But before believing, ask questions. Find why an advice is being given and if it checks out. Don't discard your ways just because someone told you. Research about it. Read about it. Learn about it. 
And if then you think what they told you is better than what you have been doing, then of course, go ahead and rectify what you did. Take advantage of your own knowledge. Whatever you know a lot about, be it fashion or cars, houses or video games or food. If you find something exciting and see that this thing can go big, then don't just leave it there or start telling everyone else. First, learn about it and see if you should invest. And if you do, then stay with it because you are the one that will know about it before most of the investment community. You are the one that can benefit from it in the long run because once it comes into the wider worldview, it has the potential to get huge and you'll reap the early bird benefits for sure. That is what patience and sticking up to your gut gives you. And you will also know if something is changing in that area, if something better is coming along, and in that case, you will know when to sell. That when you print money uh, and borrow money, subconsciously we know this leads to problems. And so more and more of us are turning to gold and silver. If, if I'm right, <laughs> gold is going to go much, much, much higher before this is over. Gold may well, it'll certainly get overpriced. It may well turn into a bubble. I hope it doesn't. In most cases, this goes a long way. People that tell you ways to become rich this month of this year are not thinking in your best interest because 99% of the time, these short-term quick hot tips are just talk and no result. Going the long way is what pays up and helps you become successful. It is better to focus on the familiar thing and keep digging deeper in that area. Read a lot more and get to know a lot more detail. Explore new things within that area. Become the expert in it so that you can be the pioneer and not just the follower. Even short-term traders that are successful are the people who know a lot about short-term trading. They learn about it and dig deeper in order to perfect themselves so that they can recognize a stock that will fall or rise in the matter of a month or a week or a day, and that is how they become rich and successful by short trading. They stick with what they know and they keep learning and honing their knowledge in that area enough to be better than the most. Know what works for you and do not stop until you find the right thing that works for you the best. You are not in the race of being good at everything, but finding what you are less bad at and then sticking to it in the long run. Trading is not just for the rich or the superior. It is for everyone in the world who is willing to spend time and effort in learning about something and then having the patience to let it run its course. When you see something that you know is going to be successful and exciting, don't just say, oh, that's going to be great. Don't tell all you. Then you go and you do your research and you figure out how to and if you should invest and how to invest and then you invest. You will know it long before I will, or long before other people in the investment community. You will also know when to sell because you will know when something's going to change again.